Welcome people. Last video we started off with osteosarcoma. See osteosarcoma means you write only classic. Okay, don't bother about surface. It is a highly malignant osteogenic or osteoblastic osseous tumor, bone forming tumor. Okay, uh, the classic osteosarcoma that is osteosarcoma means classically. 10 to 20 years people that is young people it will affect and there is poor prognosis. There are two types in classic osteosarcoma, primary and secondary. We will come to the details. So diving in now, osteogenic sarcoma, they arise from primitive osteoblast forming mesenchyme. They are malignant, they are characterized by osteoid or bone. So osteoid or bone will be there. In the microscopy you can see the osteoid, we already showed you. See this pink things, osteoid they are. Okay. Then... Uh, there are two types in osteosarcomas, uh, classic and surface, but we are focusing only on classic. Osteosarcoma always means classic. Okay, so surface don't bother much. Now moving on. Classic form uh, occurs, okay, we already told you, young patients 10 to 20 years. It occurs mainly in the metaphysis. It's highly malignant and poor prognosis. Everything bad, bad, bad only with this. Young people, highly malignant, poor prognosis. Surface, we will hide this, not very important. Moving on. So, differences are given here. If you want, you can learn this. We already have said ages in central 10 to 20 years, that will be older. Common anatomical site is metaphysis in uh, this one and here it can be something else. Location, lower end of femur, around hip, uh, upper end of humerus, etc. This uh, central medullary or classic osteosarcoma or osteogenic sarcoma, it affects males, okay. The gender selection for it is males. Uh, there are two types of um, central or medullary or classic osteogenic sarcoma, primary and secondary. Primary will usually be because of an unknown reason. So, it will be either genetic or environmental. Genetic factors could be mutation in the RB gene, P53, that is a tumor suppressor gene, P53, MDM2. Okay, so this is a very quick way of telling things. Wait, we'll tell you a little slowly. But it's still been difficult for you to digest. Hold on. Same thing guys, males, metaphysis, 10 to 20 years, knee joint, hip joint. Okay, same thing. <clears throat> then moving on to the primary and secondary. Primary means... It is a uh, primary is more common. First of all, etiology is unknown. There can be two things, genetic factors or environmental influences. Genetic factors, there can be mutation in the RB gene. Okay, RB gene, retinoblastoma locus. Hereditary mutation of chromosome 13 in, is in common with retinoblastoma locus. Mutation in P53, that is a tumor suppressor gene, overexpression of MDM2 gene. Let's write this somewhere. Okay, then we'll uh, just look at this primary one, wait. Primary one is more common. Guys, is it clear? Or it's just too much, it became too much. Primary is more common. Okay, here the etiology will be unknown. That is, that is, there will be no underlying disease or a cause. Secondary is always means there is a known disease, pre-existing disease, correct? Pre-existing disease means secondary. Primary will be, etiology will be unknown. So, they will just put as genetic and uh, environmental. Hold on. Under genetic, they have put RB gene, mutation in RB gene, mutation in P53 tumor suppressor gene and uh, overexpression of MDM2 gene. Overexpression of MDM2 gene. There is one more. We are not going into the details. So, in primary, you have the pathogenesis, the cause you will write as etiology. The mutation in RB gene, mutation in P53 tumor suppressor gene and overexpression of the MDM2 gene. Okay. So, RB gene, chromosome 13, retinoblastoma locus. Okay. Environmental, write the standard things, radiation, oncogenic virus. Let us look at the secondary 
टाइप ऑफ सेंट्रल मेड्यूलरी ऑस्टियोसार्कोमा हियर सेकेंडरी ऑलवेज मीन्स दर्ज अ प्री एग्जिस्टिंग डिजीज नोन डिजीज हियर द डिजीजेस कुड बी पैजेस डिजीज ऑफ द बोन फाइब्रस डिस्प्लेस पिया मल्टीपल ऑस्टियोकॉन्ड्रोमा क्रॉनिक ऑस्टियोमाइलाइटिस डू नो वॉट दीज आर वेट फी टेक यू बैक कंप्लीटली टू द चैप्टर यू माइट अंडरस्टैंड वॉट डिड दे से आर द कॉजेस Paget's disease of bone, osteochondroma. Where's osteochondroma? Here, osteochondroma, cartilage forming. Osteochondroma can lead to osteosarcoma. Osteochondroma can lead to osteosarcoma, and then these uh, non-tumorous conditions also can lead to osteosarcoma, like Paget's disease of bone, chronic osteomyelitis, and fibrous dysplasia. But let us look at that from our previous video. Hold on. these are the notes from the previous video where we saw this one where is that uh, paget's disease here paget's disease of bone that is nothing but osteitis deformans then we have this fibrous dysplasia here tumor like lesions of bone that will become tumor later on osteosarcoma then osteochronic osteomyelitis also can lead to This one here, chronic osteomyelitis can lead to osteosarcoma. Okay, is it clear? So, chronic osteomyelitis, Paget's disease of bone, fibrous dysplasia, multiple osteochondroma. Chondroma is cartilage, benign tumor of cartilage forming element. Okay, so we are done with the it. pathogenesis etiology and pathogenesis that's what we were covering here behavior highly malignant you know that then gross and microscopy we will look at okay histologic types we will look at spread and prognosis also we look at we know prognosis is poor correct so let us look at the gross and microscopy clinical features first of all clinical features hold on we need to look at the clinical features oh oh here 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 I think let us look at this in the next video this video has become very long and tiring so for now it's a bye meet you in the next video we'll see osteosarcomas clinical features gross microscopy variants etc etc okay bye bye